It's amazing if you think about it, not even a lifetime after the first flight, only eight years after the first human even went into space. And we do this. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. These grainy pictures capture a triumph of human progress driven by our ambition. But then, in 2006, NASA discovered the original tapes of the moon landing have gone missing. A huge search is launched, hundreds of leads followed. You see, the footage shown on TV was converted for broadcast and lost a lot of its quality in the process. The original tapes, recorded directly from the surface of the moon, were almost pristine, if they could be found. After three years, NASA make a devastating and let's be honest, kind of hilarious confession. Yep, in the 1980s, in order to save some cash, they wiped 200,000 old tapes for reuse. Now, of course, there are countless copies of the moon landing, but they're all taken from the converted TV footage. This was a bit like discovering someone had accidentally used the original copy of the Declaration of Independence as toilet paper. One of the triumphs of human progress and ambition, a victim of incompetence. Incompetence. It's 2016, right? We've got the best education and technology in the world, but everything still goes wrong. Long queues, pointless forms, delays on trains, cancelled planes, crappy Wi-Fi, constant updates, and I still can't get this document to print. If you've ever had an idiot boss, you'll know what I mean. The world seems full of people who suck at their jobs. Yes, we live in times of seemingly unending progress, but somehow, the closer we fly to the sun, is it me, or is everything just a bit shit? Ah, you get the idea. By one of those strange coincidences of history, at exactly the same moment this was happening, another giant leap was taking place down on Earth. An unknown teacher was becoming a national celebrity, having published a surprise bestseller, a book which takes incompetence head on and proves that not only are ambition and progress not a cure for humanity's embarrassing long list of cock-ups, they might actually be the cause. You are about to witness history in the making. From the dawn of history, a better way of life has been man's dream man's goal. This belief in never-ending progress powered by ambition, the American dream, we take it for granted. But when we do that, we forget the stories of our past. We forget Icarus, the legend of the boy who flew too close to the sun. And we even forget the story of creation itself, where God reproacheth Adam's misery, whereinto he was fallen by ambition. Go! Them. Yep, from the poems of Machiavelli to Macbeth, stories have been trying to warn us for ages that ambition is a vice, not a virtue. But then, two things happened. First of all, America. A place so massive and easy to conquer, it seemed to confirm the superiority of white European people. And secondly, the Industrial Revolution, creating these big companies with complex hierarchies, hundreds, even thousands of employees. And these industrial hierarchies created the career ladder, and our ambition had a new outlet, the promotion. And that's where the hero of our story comes in, a teacher called Lawrence J. Peter, who saw something that no one else had noticed. Right, so imagine you're an ambitious young person, and you get your first job on the career ladder. You do well, and so before long you get promoted, a more senior title, better pay, and you do really well at that job too. So again, you get promoted, better pay, better hours, and so it goes on, promotion after promotion. John, you mean... That's right, Murray, I got the promotion. Starting tomorrow, I'm no longer just a shipping clerk, I'm chairman of the board. But wait, there's a flaw at the heart of this system. Oh, that's terrible. I just don't know how that slipped through. You see, we always get promoted based on our performance in our previous job, not the one we're being promoted into. 
Eventually, and inevitably, you find yourself promoted into a job you're actually no good at. According to Lawrence J. Peter, you have reached your level of incompetence. Another bad one. And this one's a Lulu. Now, this is twice in a row. And here's the thing, once you're here, you can't get promoted out of it, you're not competent enough. And even today, you're really unlikely to get a demotion. And so, you're stuck, doing a job badly. Oh boy. This is the Peter Principle, and it states that in a hierarchy, every employee tends to rise to their level of incompetence. It's simple logic, really. Anything that works tends to get tested until it fails, even people. But it goes even deeper. The Peter Principle also says all that's needed is enough time and enough levels in the hierarchy, and in time, every post tends to be occupied by an employee who is incompetent to carry out its duties. And think about that for a second. Hierarchies are everywhere. Now you might be wondering how any work actually gets done. Well, Peter said, it's done by people who haven't reached their level of incompetence. Yet. The thing is, you can't get rid of hierarchies, they're essential for the functioning of society. You might think you can turn down a promotion, but that's not so easy when you see the paycheck, right? And who wants to be demoted? But I just gotta come up with something! Say. Say. But I think there is an antidote to the Peter Principle, it's here somewhere. Lawrence Peter says it's the key to health and happiness at work and in private life. Ah, here it is. It's called creative incompetence. Create the impression you've already reached your level of incompetence. Wait, what? The only way to avoid getting stuck doing a job you suck at is to pretend to suck at the one you're doing already. Lawrence Peter showed us the irony of human existence, that our ambition for bigger and better is actually a recipe for mediocrity. But maybe more than anything else, he questioned progress itself, this mindless escalation, progress for progress sake. Carry on like this, he warned and we might reach our level of incompetence as a species. Hey everyone, once again, this film could not have been made without the support of so many people on Patreon.com. Um, each one of these videos takes nearly two months to make, and without the support of you guys over there, I just wouldn't be able to dedicate the time to it. So thank you so much. As I record this, we are tantalizingly close to another big milestone. I've also added a whole host of new rewards, so do check it out. The address is Patreon.com forward slash Adam Westbrook. Until next time, thank you for watching.